Hey, it's Jordan with Beat the Press. We are doing a little video podcast here, so we're moving up in the world. Um, as always, if you want to watch or listen to my podcasts, uh, I have free podcasts, and I'm also going to be doing premium podcasts for my patrons. Uh, that's patreon.com slash Jordan Charitin Reports. Your help is going to get me back in the field as well as help me hire other reporters. So that's patreon.com slash Jordan Charitin Reports. Uh, I am here with uh, a wonderful journalist, independent journalist, Heather Lynn. You are uh, somebody who's been really tackling an issue that's getting no national media attention. Frankly, from everything I've seen, not much attention even in local media in Massachusetts. Um, it's kind of a mixed bowl of all the stuff we know in terms of water contamination that we've seen in Flint and other places, mixed with a nuclear waste site and many other things. Um, for people that don't know what's going on in uh, Norton, Attleboro, and many other towns there, can you kind of give us, uh, I know it's long and a couple decades long, kind of give people yeah. uh, your, your knowledge of what's going on, why is brown and black water been coming out for quite some time, uh, people are sick, uh, tell us what's going on there. Um, well, for the past few years, Norton and Attleboro have been frequent, frequently flushing their water systems. And a lot of the time the water comes out like black tea or coffee. Um, the residents are being told that their water is safe as long as it's running clear, that it can be used, they can drink it. Um, what they haven't been told is that in the 1940s, a man named Mr. Schback owned a vast amount of property and most of it was wetlands. He wanted to fill it in and make an orchard. This is back in the 40s. So I'm sure he didn't assume um, all of the hazards that would come with this endeavor. So he started his, his private landfill and all of the contamination. Um, we have a lot of jewelry factories around here that were active back in the day and they use arsenic and chromium as as some of the chemicals that they use in their industry and that of course has to be disposed of um from those industries and other industries in the area all of the contamination that wouldn't be accepted by the municipal land fill was brought to mr Spack's site and this happened for decades the town of norton found out about it about this private landfill and it was contaminated. So they took it over and they had a contract with a company called Metals and Controls Inc., which was sub-owned by Texas Instruments. Um, and Metals and Control Inc. had a government contract with the United States Navy and Department of um, Atomic Energy to create enriched uranium in the area. There's already been a lawsuit against Texas Instruments um, by the workers who work there. A lot of them have, have gotten cancer and various illnesses. Um, the radiological contamination, it, it corrodes your DNA. So you, you, you'll see symptoms in the person themselves, but you can also see symptoms from this exposure to this contamination generations down the road. Um, in the 1980s, a student from Florida, he was 20 years old, he was doing an environmental survey study on the SPAC area. And as far as like nothing about SPAC had ever been told to the community, the town never brought up that, hey, it might be contaminated until this 20 year old boy doing the environmental study found that there were snails with no shells or paper thin shells. The snails shells were so toxic they were running away from them. This is documented if you look up the landfill site and um, how the contamination was discovered. So as of the 80s, um, the town itself stepped forward and started making motions to make it a Superfund site because all of these contaminations, the enriched uranium, the arsenic, the chromium had been buried with no regulation on private land for decades and in a so, wetland. And just so the audience knows, this was around, this was kind of like during the Manhattan Project era, correct? This went on, um, Mr. Spack's dumping went until the 50s, 
late early 60s. And then the town dumping went from the 60s until the early 90s, I believe. Um, so they, they were starting to try to make it a super fun site. And part of that, I think it's like 14 companies, I can look up the names of the companies for you in a minute, assumed responsibility for the remediation of the site. A few of those being Bank of America, Texas Instruments, the town of Attleboro, the town of Norton, own responsibility for the contamination and the cleanup. They got $45 million of roughly, and they were supposed to remove 34,000 yards of, of contaminated waste. They ran out of funds after about a year of work on the Norton side because this landfill, it's 9.4 acres. Half of it is in one town, half of it's in the other. Half of it's, um, in, Nor the Nor half of it's in Norton, half of it's in Attleboro. And just so yes. we know the geography, this is in Massachusetts, like west of Boston or east of Boston? West of Boston. We're in cent um, southern central Massachusetts. I'm basically right above Rhode Island. Um, maybe 35 minutes from Boston. Um, so they were supposed to remove 34,000 yards of waste. They ran out of money. The waste that were, was removed um, summed up to be about 2,400 yards, 900 pounds, um, and they dug down 12 feet. We're talking about decades of heavy chemical contamination in a wetland, 2,400 yards, isn't it? It gets deeper. So this is this contamination is going on on the wetland, which of course it's my belief that it's affecting it's affecting the water systems. If you can't clean pharmaceuticals out of our tap water, how are you cleaning chromium, arsenic, radiation, uh, all all of these awful chemicals that are ca that cause genetic defects? So I started looking further into it. And this was a very industrialized area. We had textile mills a couple towns over in one socket and Pawtucket, and their water is so gross. I thought, I thought, because their water tastes gross and it's just, it's just known. Their water is disgusting. I looked up their water on the live science um, database and their information comes from the EPA and the EWG. Our water had 10 contaminants over health and safety guidelines. Out of those 10 contaminants, eight were added as TTH, TTMH or TTHMs. They're um, chlorides and it causes cancer and difficulties during pregnancy. One of them, uh, the chemicals that they use is chloroform. The health and safety guideline for chloroform is 0 0.07 parts per billion. The town, now they have to pay for this chemical to clean the water that they're telling everybody is safe. They have to pay for this chemical. They're adding 36.6 parts per billion. That in itself makes the water unsafe. It's my belief, and it's been broadcast on the local news, especially since the video that I did came out, um, that, that the water's safe and they're looking into it and it's fine to use. I've gotten private messages. Um, one woman lives on the same street as this landfill. She has two children with very rare genetic diseases. Her daughter has the symptoms. She already has, a, it's a rare disease as the doctor described it, but the symptoms she's displaying are one inability. The tumors are growing inside her bones. Um, we also have a deformity here that is is very, very, it, it, it can only be found here. And it's called angel wings. And it's the swans and the, the waterfowl that live here are being born with, their wings are like inside out, upside down. They're horribly deformed. I've had several people come forward with different rare forms of cancer, chromosome deletion, um, genetic diseases that weren't present in their families before. I've had woman, a woman tell me she makes, she makes her baby's formula out of the tap water. 
because we can't always not everybody can always afford you know spring water bottled water especially you got a new baby yeah so i think also to make a visual here this uh spack landfill is all around wetlands this area yes. is all surrounded by wetlands and you have it's not only Attleboro and norton that get their uh, drinking water. Can you name the name the uh, towns that also are affected? Attleboro, Attleboro, Norton, Plainville, Sharon, Foxboro, um, Mansfield. These are all, and 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 it's not it's not just the SPAC, the SPAC site. When I mention Plainville. Um, 12 miles away from the Schwack site is another landfill that was owned by Lady Bird Johnson. They used coal ash as fill from a power plant down in Fall River. There, when you bury coal ash, it's very specific on how you bury it because it's a PCB. My stepfather worked there as a heavy equipment operator. And when it was buried, it was supposed to be buried with a seamless tarpaulin. That way the leach water couldn't sink through. Um, this landfill is actually located right across a four-lane highway from a, a reservoir. Um, the machines poked holes in that seamless tarpaulin. I'm sure not deliberately, but it was done. The leach pipes that are supposed to provide ventilation so that contamination wouldn't spread were constantly being run over by the equipment. My stepfather would call down. He would call at the bottom of the hill. He would call down to the bottom of the hill. Move, try not to move your arms because you're... Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> uh, he would call down to the bottom of the hill and be like, hey, Milty, um, pipe such and such number, whatever is, is broken, and Milty would just brush it off. The pipe never would get fixed. So all of this PCB contamination... Now, they're tw these two sites are 12 miles apart which seems like a great distance. But when you're talking about that distance is solely consumed by wetlands, it's really not far at all. And you're talking decades and decades of contamination. And uh, like you said, I mean, first of all, just so people know, I mean, Boston, one of the wealthier cities in America. Uh, then you got Foxborough, that's where the New England Patriots play. Uh, this is, I'd say, middle class to this upper middle class. Right. <laughs> middle class to upper middle class in a lot of these places. My uh, aunt and uncle actually live in Mansfield, so it affects me okay. too. Um, and I, when I told them about it, they had no idea. <laughs> um, so you Maybe can only imagine um, through local media not covering this. But what I wanted to talk to you about was uh, you and I spoke about this in private conversations, but you're kind of hearing from local environmental agencies, the EPA, the same exact playbook. Oh, well, it's, you know, just flush the pipes. And uh, sometimes there's discoloration in the water. It doesn't necessarily mean anything's toxic. Um, they kind of- Would you drink the, after you flush the toilet, would you go and fill a cup? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I want you to expand, first of all, you've been saying that because basically, from what I could see in that area, you're the one of the only people reporting on this. So you have sick people coming to you, very similar illnesses. <clears throat> you have autoimmune, you have cancers, you have genetic, genetic, genetic. Uh, mal mal malfunctions, um, especially in children. You've mentioned a few children. Yes, um, yes. And what is the response? Because from what I could tell, there hasn't been one month. And I should add, I should add, as this brown water, as this black water coming out, they took the spack, I believe, off the Superfund site in October yep, in 2017. July. Yeah. I, I believe it was July of this past summer. Um, they claim that the site is clean. I found, I've been working... Because now that I put that initial video out and I know what I know and I've had the people contact me that have... It's, I want to help them as much as I can. I've been working with uh, a few of them on trying to get some independent testing done. I believe I found a company that will test the sludge, soil, and water. I've been kind of focusing on if I could find a place that could do tree core testing because I believe that, you know, a tree has its growth rings. As it grows, it retains it retains information on 
what was in the water that it was absorbing at what time and how much. And that information is there forever, like a fingerprint, where with sludge, water, and soil, it can fluctuate with rainfall and and lack of rainfall, you know? So I feel that where I feel that the water departments are direct, they're not knowingly lying to these people about the safety of their water. They're dancing around the fact to save face and money, I guess. They know, the towns know that the water is not safe and they're telling people that it's okay to drink. And Texas Instruments knows that people have suffered from their industry because they recently filed for impunity um, from any court action resulting from their government contract with the Navy and, and, and Department of Atomic Energy. So I, I honestly feel that Texas Instruments wouldn't be filing for impunity if they weren't aware of their guilt, and that the Water Department wouldn't be adding the levels of chemicals that they are if they seriously thought the water was clean. Because the amount of chemicals that they're adding alone make the water unsafe to drink, causes cancer and birth defects. There's several reasons why the water is dirty. Right. And one thing that strikes me about this is, I mean, look at the history of the United States, other than endless war and oligarchy and all those things. But basically, there seems to, there was all this industrial buildup, a lot of contracts with the federal government and companies like Texas Instruments. And there wasn't much thought, <laughs> like 50 years from now, of, well, what happens when we need to move this waste? What happens if something goes wrong and this water, uh, this contamination uh, basically spreads to the groundwater? Uh, what happens when it, uranium goes out into the air? Um, it seems like not just in Massachusetts, but all the stories I've been covering, you've been covering, uh, the chickens are coming home to roost now. People are getting sick. The, co the water is being discolored but an element that I have seen. They're not putting two and two together. Right, right. Or they are putting two and two together and they're just covering it up. Oh, I think they, there's, listen, they, the town, I'm just gonna tell it like it is. The town of Norton knew what was being buried there for how long it was being buried there, long before it was discovered by that 20 year old kid in the 80s. They knew, the repercussions of what they were burying there. And that's why they never brought it up. That's why it was never dealt with before the 80s. The water department knows that this is affecting their water system, but it's also a rich town. The houses sell, let me tell you what, I'm sure the real estate agents in these towns are, are not happy with me, but they, there's, they're not being, they're not being truthful, and that's my main problem: is that they know they're lying, and instead of being honest and going after these companies like Texas Instruments and the water company, frankly, for lying, um, and and putting in like a home-based filtration system, that these the responsible parties will be responsible for installing and maintaining so that their showers are clean, their water is clean, they can brush their teeth with clean water. Um, these companies, Texas Instruments is owned by Apple. They certainly have the money to do this. I, I feel like instead of lying to the people, we should be honest with them and that way we can proactively do something about it. When you think about it, like, the same people who own these companies are the same people that own some of the pharmaceutical companies. Texas Instruments makes medical instruments. So are they really going to care if a side product of their industry makes people sick so that they need more of their industry? Yeah. It's a great point. Yeah. And it seems to me, I mean, we, a lot of these places, Flint, East Chicago, uh, it's environmental racism. Uh, you don't, I mean, you got the coverage you did in Flint because it was so bad. But to me, it seems like most people- That aren't. doesn't apply here. Right. Most people don't seem to even be aware uh, that there's an issue in, in these different towns. Most people, uh, I don't live in Massachusetts, but knowing what I know about local media all around the country, doesn't seem to be covered. And like you said, the- No, the media, the media is back in the story that the water is safe. 
Like, if you could look into this subject for two minutes and know that it's not. And there's also a Facebook page, uh, you could tell the audience the name, that literally people have been posting for like two years, just <laughs> their ongoing brown water, black water, bathtubs, out of the sink. They even joke about it. Y you might get a laugh or two. And what's the name of the page? Um, it's, it's called Sick of Dirty Water in Norton, Massachusetts. And, you know, it, it's happening all over the country, but uh, one thing that strikes me is you hear this tough talk from now the EPA is saying they're, we're going to engage on a war on lead. I don't know about that, especially with this. EPA. Are you going to rip out all the all the pipes in the country? Well, that would be a start, but, you know, we're too busy spending, you know, trillions. We're, too busy. we're going to build a wall. Right. But the, so the EPA says we're going to create a war on lead. Yet, you know, it's it's happening in East Chicago, too. They it's window dressing. They talk about, all right, we're going to dedicate all, you know, X amount of money towards remediation or cleanup, which, frankly, they don't clean up the whole area because it's not possible to clean up all that nuclear waste, radioactive material. Sure. The damage is done at that point. Yeah, it's it's there. It's like a big monster dog took a big poop in the middle of your room and then ran all over it's, it's never going to be right again talk about um I mean, I mean you're one of the lone reporters there covering this so what is the pushback you've received you've obviously tried to get in touch with the environmental agencies there i don't know how high you've gone uh what um, is the pushback you've the, been receiving the department of health has been receiving a lot of calls they've got and visits um, one of the women that i speak with uh has been down there several times actually I don't know if I can pull up the letter. It's a lengthy letter anyway, but it says that the Department of Health is having the um, the person who registers genetic defects look into it and one of their lead doctors um, look in, into the genetic side effects of, of this contamination. Um, but like I said, it being a result of a government contract, that'd be like, That'd be like them telling on themselves. And also... Who wants to do that? And also, if they acknowledge Norton and Attleboro, then you're opening up Pandora's box for all the other areas uh, that might be contaminated due to government contracts, the Manhattan Project. Oh, you see where I'm going with this? I do. I I would like to hold them accountable, and I would like to make it easier. I found since I started dealing with this, I've I found that it's very difficult to get your water independently tested with integrity because a lot of these water companies, much like the EPA, have their own interests, you know. Um, so that's that's really a challenge. And if we could come together as a community and find an easier way and a more accessible way to do that or um, test for several things in one test, um, like the the water testing company that I'm dealing with, they can test for individual metals or they have like a, it's called a lust test that will test for five different metals. And one of those metals Texas Instruments used um, in making their, their electronic boards. I think it starts with a C. I can't think of it right now, but um, you can test for those those chemicals, but it's expensive. And then you have to get the samples and sh ship them out. And and even then, they have to know what they're looking for, what contaminations you're looking for. And when you're talking about a landfill that was just a free-range dump, you don't even know half of the stuff that was put there. Let's talk about these two landfills. Are they both closed now? Uh, are, the, uh, are either of them op operational? I know you mentioned one of them was... Lady Bird Johnson, the pres former president's wife, um, nice. you know, yeah. even though they're closed, are there any activities around them? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, Laidlaw, the coal ash was buried on the West End. I call it Trash Mountain. Um, and they currently have solar panels up all over it. And there's barbed wire fencing. There's a guard shack at the base of it, even though it's not operative. Strange, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and SPAC, because the Attleboro side of SPAC is privately owned by this man named Al Dumont. 
Um, the Attleboro side was never declared a Superfund. There was no cleanup. Mr. Spack was told by um, our by the government that he had to cap the landfill, but he was claiming poverty. He didn't have the money to do so. His recent um, attempt was to he wants to reopen the landfill for a couple years to provide the funds to cap it off reopen it and like dig around and stir stuff up more because that's that sounds really bright <laughs> yeah what could go wrong um and so the one uh has been taken off the superfund site and it's not like are, are the local uh environmental agencies there are they doing any water testing are they doing any testing for anything or they're basically saying don't believe your lying eyes um well I don't believe they were doing testing and there was very much interest before the video I did came out. It got like 138,000 views and a lot of those were local. And I believe it caused a, a lot of concern and a lot of people to start looking into things independently, on, you know, and, and that of course I'm sure led them to the same conclusion as me. Um, there's... There's a lot of a lot of people concerned. They're having a town meeting on April 11th coming up that I'll be going to and I'll probably if they'll allow me in <laughs> I'll be broadcasting live. Um but I did notice do you, you've been working on Flint. Yeah. The the super fun site near Flint that was owned by GM that's now owned by the United States government. They were flushing heavy metals and chemicals into the sewer lines. It seems to me like several of these these super fun sites are government owned and part of government program. Like the contamination that's coming from them is coming from the government. Mm -hmm. And also the contamination is uh, even if it's not directly coming from the government, it's indirectly coming from the government because the government essentially allows these companies to do whatever the hell they want. Uh, it's corporate welfare that causes environmental genocide. I mean, in Flint, yeah. Flint happened because of a privatized pipeline gone wrong. I mean, they were creating a, they want, the government was allowing them to build a privatized pipeline. And in the meantime, as that was being built, they went to the Flint River. Here you have the government setting up contracts with Texas Instruments, um, and obviously there's no regulation on what they're doing, um, as well as uh, a lot of these other companies that are involved. And what's even worse is once the contamination comes out, for example, in East Chicago right now, DuPont, which is responsible for a lot of the contamination, that bastion of you know humanity. I know, I know of them. <laughs> yeah, they they are being allowed to essentially make money off of their remediation. So they're not, the priority isn't for them to clean up and do remediation for public health first. It's allowing them to sell their factory that created all this contamination. They're being able to do that first. So it seems that, you know, Scott Pruitt, this, this is long preceding Trump or the current EPA, but it seems like there, even when there is regulation, there really isn't. Thoughts? How do you regulate that, though? You know that no matter, no matter where they put it, or or bury it, or it's not gonna go away. You know. Right. And can you kind of talk about? Um, have you been seeing? Obviously, you had the direct. You know, several people come up to you telling you they were sick. But my experience in East Chicago was all, all of a sudden all these people that lived on a block together were like, oh. That's no wonder for women in their late 30s have this cancer that none of them have yes. pre-existing conditions. Are people starting to kind of connect the dots of that a lot of people? I'm, I truly believe I could never say the word back again. And it's not going to stop. So like we were talking about, essentially, not only do you have these mothers and, and people coming to you about their kids, but people are starting to kind of put two and two together as far as, oh, well, four or five women on the same block have the same <laughs> exact cancers or, or whatever the case may be that um, previously they just thought was kind of 
a coincidence? One in a billion. One of them, one of them is one in a billion, the doctor told her. And right now I know of three that have it. And what kind of cancer? It's it's not a cancer. It's a genetic disease where um, benign tumors show up throughout your body and eventually they can go on to become malignant. Um, these children, the the symptoms they're displaying is that the tumors are, are showing up, but they show up in their bones and can later become malignant. So uh, bottom line, uh, what can people in the area or even outside the area uh, do? Do they flood the EPA lines? Do they flood the local uh, state agency lines? Do they uh, sh obviously show up to this town hall you, you described? Uh, what could people do if essentially the departments and the agencies are essentially tell telling them nothing to see here? Um, there's some water testing companies that are out in California. They're independent. Um, I can send you the link to them when when we finish up. That way people, because anyone and in any state, not just here, but anywhere, if you, you want to get your water tested, um, this is a good resource. But testing your water and, and being vocal, talking to your neighbors, um, I think a lot of the reason why a lot of this has gone unspoken for so long with so many sick people is that we don't communicate. Uh, you've got people whose children have the same, the same one in a billion disease that live on the same street, but they didn't know about each other until two weeks ago. You know, so talking to your neighbors, like how many people on your street have passed away of cancer recently or have it? Or how many children on your street have learning disabilities? Um, I was told that one of the first symptoms of this, this kind of contamination is weakened enamel, bad teeth is, is something to look for. Um, I definitely say go 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 and and hammer on your the Department of Health, you know. Um, and if you suspect that that your child's illness is a result of environmental contamination, get several opinions. There's, I believe, there are doctors who deal with environmentally related illness. I would go speak with them, especially if whatever genetic malnorm mal mal <laughs> malnormity is present was never present in your family previously. Right. And uh, this town hall or meeting is what? What's the date again? Uh, April 11th. I'm not sure of the time. Last time it was like 7 p.m. I'm not sure if they're going to hold a day meeting or a night meeting. Um, in the town of Norton at town hall at town hall. Great. And where can people find you? They can find old videos where you talk about this in depth. Uh, let people know. Um, you can see the videos on my Facebook profile. I have a couple of them loaded up onto YouTube. I'll share the links with you. Um, and that's, that's about it as far as me talking about it i've done it seems that i've done a video on it about every every other month since october leslie what's it like for you personally i mean you're a relatively young woman um i don't know your age but you're not a senior citizen obviously uh how yeah. is it basically being kind of this like lone ranger trying to expose this stuff because it's not in your head i could tell you i've been covering this kind of stuff all over the country and uh there's a lot of lies to cover these things up being told. When I, when I first, I didn't intend to take all this on, on my own. I, I was bothered by the brown water. I was at the town meeting the night before I made, the night before I made the video. And they discussed for 20 minutes somebody's $2,000 a year salary increase. So I left. Um, the next morning I woke up and I was really upset. 
because we're talking about people's lives. We're talking this, this needs to be dealt with. This needs to be looked into. Um, and that's when the next morning I, I woke up and I made that video. Like I, my hair wasn't done. I didn't have any makeup on. I just propped my phone up on the table and I don't know how I managed to spit all that out in 10 minutes, but I did it. And I think, I think a lot of the local people who have seen it and bothered to look into it even a little know exactly what I'm talking about, you know, and the only opposition I've really received are real estate agents. I had a guy contact me about two weeks ago. It's not even one of the towns I mentioned. It's a neighboring town. He was looking at buying waterfront property and he was, you know, looking up the town of Rainham and he saw my video and decided not to buy the property. And I, I have to guess that can't be the first case. Mm -hmm. Great. I will, uh, I'm going to stay on this. Thank you for telling us about all this in depth. It's really to me a shame and disgraceful that you have, to, yeah, you know, you just have to have, um, I mean, you have a day, do, day job. You're not like a full-time journalist yet, but the fact that the journalists aren't covering this and people are expected to just believe they have brown and black water coming out of their baths and <laughs> sink fountains. And it's, it's just, not coffee. yeah, uh, that it's nothing. Uh, that's not exactly a first world country. We see those that happening in third world countries. So I'll stay on this. Uh, send me those links, it. send me those links you were talking about and uh, we'll talk soon. Awesome. Thank you. It was nice talking to you, Jordan.